Hey folks, this is Rainiac, and we're back with the third Doctor Who review of the series. No freezing of fun this week, this is becoming a habit of one person not turning up, but thankfully we managed to find Kachiri again. I, I was... I was lost. I was scared. Quit, <laughs> quit laughing, because let's get out with the episode. <laughs> okay, so I'll get the spoiler warning out of the way. This contains spoilers for uh, Robot of Sherwood, the third episode of the series. So if you haven't seen it yet, then please go back, watch it before you continue watching this review. Okay, before we get it's to Robot awesome. of Sherwood, Can actually, I, I believe you have something you want to get off your chest. Well, first off, this the, I was going to actually add to a spoiler warning because I'm going to bring up another show that has Robin Hood. You okay. haven't seen Once Upon a Time. I'm kind of going to be spoiling some of that. Anyway, so first off... Why did it take fucking 30 minutes in the first episode for Claire to understand regeneration? Oh, God. I have no idea. Oh, God. Yeah, guys, I'm going to rant about the first two episodes for fast since I haven't been here. But um, one of the things I was doing, I was actually telling Raynak earlier, uh, in this episode, there's a scene where she literally tells Robin Hood the entire story of the Doctor. And... It just reminded me so much how the first episode ticked me off because 30 minutes of the episode was literally devoted to her having to learn regeneration when she knew all the doctors and what regeneration was. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like to compare it to the first like little mini Christmas special. Um, oh, crap. Which was one like, was I'm that? Actually, it was uh, the one that uh, it's a five. It's like a seven-minute episode called "Born Again," and it's literally like n not that many people have seen this. Actually, I'll I'll actually link this to you. Okay. Uh, so you could probably link it here. Not that many people have seen, it, especially if you're in America, because this is, was for um, this is, was for children in need, and it was basically moments after nine turns into ten. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's seven minutes, and Rose, at the end of it, realized he's the doctor. Flash forward now, we have we had the first episode where Clara took 30 minutes and had to have the same conversation twice. Yeah. To learn that someone that she's seen all 12, all 13 faces of, is the doctor. Okay. So that's now, your now, first. That's your first complaint. Yeah, the, do you see why I was art, like all mad at the episode now for having all that? I completely agree with you. I think we sort of covered it in that review. What was your second um, tangent you um, to go on? There's been a disturbing trend I've noticed for the last few episodes where I was more interested in the guest stars and their story than I was of Clara. Okay. Um, last episode, I, I think Blue would have been an amazing companion. I don't know why, like, I know the whole, you're a soldier thing, and I think there could have been some awesome scenes between Blue and Pink and Clara. You've just I reminded mean, me, we never even touched on the on the journey Blue being refusing to the TARDIS in the review last week. Damn oh, it. Um, okay, well, let's do No, that. no, no, we haven't time, we haven't time. <laughs> <laughs> because this but, is not about last week, this is about Robot of Sherwood. But I wasn't here last week or the week before. All right, um, all right, but um, just for but the sake the, of uh, brevity, but I, I, but I agree 30, with you. 30-second rant. Basically, she had a great character. Um, it's not the first time he had a soldier in the TARDIS and hell. He used to have soldiers all the time. He used to have three companions all the time. I mean, it's something that should have been done, and it would have been nice to see her conversations being uh, – she looks like a family soldier. You know, her uncle, her brother were soldiers, more like yeah. her parents were soldiers. You know, her whole family might have been soldiers. And l knowing only how to shoot first, ask questions later, compared to Pink's, you know, there's a deeper meaning of protecting people type of soldier. I would have loved to see scenes like that. Anyway, two robots are sure we're now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we've had two, what can I be described as rather dark episodes of Doctor Who, and this one wasn't. Oh, this one was hilarious. The whole the whole scene with the three of them in the dungeon, I just could not stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> there were some very funny scenes, I have to, it has to be said. 
Um, there, there's a trend, another trend that I'm seeing that I'm kind of not looking forward to. It looks like they're really heavily making fun of the tropes. Like, um, the tropes. Like, you know, like in the first episode, we had the, oh, here we go again. Oh, you redecorated. I don't like it. You know, oh. and then this episode, oh, what's your big master plan? Please do not say the two words Sonic and or screwdriver. Can I just say, I love you, Mark Gates is no homer for putting that line in there because he's absolutely right. Oh, yeah. No, he's the right. The screwdriver but... is the be all and end all of solutions. Yeah, and that's the that's actually a joke that people's been saying for a long time. In the 80s, people were saying that joke. Cause, really? Yeah, in, in the 80s, he used it all the time. In fact, uh, I think, uh, I want to say Dr. Five had to stop using it. Like, they actually wrote out the screwdriver for like a few seasons. Because it, wow, yeah, they almost used it all the time. It, it's actually been a major trope, and that's why I'm kind of afraid of like, are is this show now to the point where they're just doing tropes that the fan base makes fun of all the time? It's possible. Like it's, it's possible. I do like in the previous episode, and I know I'm talking the previous episode, but I didn't get to say it. It's how it, how it feels like they're trying to make this feel like uh, the 80s Who, not the, you know, 2014 Who, you know? Like, the the whole scene between him and Rusty, while he's in his mind, would have been probably the same special effect they use way back then. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. I did say back in, now you got me doing it, but back in Deep Breath, I did say that the, the special effects budget had increased. Yeah. And, and then Into the Dark happened to bring me wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, no more talking about those previous episodes unless I end up saying, well, something I want to say. <laughs> I know you're going to break that, but okay, we'll, we'll stick to that uh, rule. So, yeah, as I said, there were some very funny scenes in this. It was a much more lighthearted, mostly comedic episode. There were a couple of dark turns. But oh. the scene that perhaps made, made me laugh out loud the most was the sword versus spoon fight. <laughs> yeah, I think the spoon's going to be uh, 12's banana or... <laughs> Not 12. Yeah, 12's version of the banana or the 12's version of uh, the feds. We're going to see we're we're going uh see shirts now with I have my trusty spoon. Yeah, honestly, between the fencing um, scene and also the mention of the mini scope, the poetry is strong with this one. Oh yeah, yeah. Like again, I, I as I said, it is. It feels like they're trying to make this feel more like. 80s who I, I like do you see what i'm trying to say like 70s or 80s who like yeah i see, I see what you're trying to say yeah i'm not so sure that's a bad thing to be honest no but... it's not it's not a bad thing it's just i hope they do more original things with it instead of you know making the whole sonic screwdriver joke over and over again yeah it, it might end up backfiring for the younger fan base yeah but the older fans, the teenage fans, I think they're going to lap it up. Oh, yeah, no. Like, the the whole, like, literally, like, the whole scene in the dungeon. I just could not stop laughing. I really can't yeah, stop laughing. I, I, I do think maybe that the, the um, I hate this word, like the Doctor did, but the banter between the Doctor and Robin Hood maybe got just a little bit much, but it was hilarious. Oh, uh, they're... Both trying to be heroes. Like, the way I saw it was they're both trying to be heroes in Clara's eye. Like, yeah. you know, Doctor isn't the cool one right now. He's old, so he's trying to be more younger and more, you know, energetic. That's the way I kind of feel, felt with it. That's something that was slightly out of place, I felt, because yeah, back in the... Last two episodes, we've got, oh, I'm not sure if you're a good man, but I think you're trying to be. All of a sudden, he's a hero to her. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's up with the Ryan. Like, I, like, there's some points in the Ryan's that I love. Like, I love, well, and I think it also goes with Capaldi's acting. His acting is phenomenal. Oh, Capaldi's fantastic. I love how, like, I, I know. See, I'm breaking the rule right now. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think... You, you saw my notes whenever I was watching uh, the Dalek episode last week. Well, like, I was posting them in our Skype Yeah, chat. I didn't see your actual uh, word pad that you were going to make up. Cause you never yeah, I, I had no but... time. I had no, I've, I've worked, like, 50 hours the last two weeks. I can I, relate. I can relate. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but 
I said that uh, the the last episode felt a lot like the first season episode with the ninth Doctor Dalek. Yeah. And one of the things, like I I, can't, I went back to thinking about it, the whole scene between him yelling at the Dalek, and even though it's almost word by word that what um, uh, Eccleston did, Capaldi looked like he was more tired with it. Like, yeah. oh, not this, uh, you know. Again, yeah, I, I get yeah. what you're trying to say. Yeah, and he, he literally, it, it, instead of being all ragey, like he was pissed, but he wasn't like, you know, 11 or 9th version of raged. And of course, yeah, never... you're the first per- you're the first guest I had on here to self censor yourself. So thanks for that. You've saved me a, tr- a gel. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have said the f word, <laughs> words like twice already. Um, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, like yeah, he, like um, I think in their things, I don't think Tin ever got his anger with the Daleks episode, and but both that Doomsday 11... maybe. He wasn't mad though. No, no. Yeah, he never got to the point where he was slamming a giant wrench into their face. Oh, don't remind me of that, please. <laughs> or blowing them up with his face as well. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, that yeah, I, I like Paul Yossi, and then at the end of this episode, when he goes from all smiles and this is my new best friend Robin Hood to, she should not have told you that. Well, he you never know, like, thought of him as his new best friend, Robin Hood. That was uh, another thing I really liked about this, was the friction between them. Well, at the end, they were chums, though. They were chums at the end. They mutually respected each other. I don't think they were chums. Uh, but the Doctor did um, admire him enough to give him Marion back. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's the thing I'm going to compare to. Like, I kind of felt like that girl was going to be Marion. Because um, Once Upon a Time literally did the same thing last year in their season. Yeah, where I don't watch a... Once Upon a Time. I tried to watch it, but... Oh, well, it gets it gets good. You just have to get past the first, like, half the first season. But it does get good. Um, basically, in Once Upon a Time, uh, there's a whole thing where uh, the main character and Hook is trapped in another world. And then they end up saving a woman who was trapped in a dungeon or whatever. And the woman turns out to be Miriam. And, and that's Marion, okay. Yeah. It, it's it's somewhat the same thing. And I don't know, like, I, I, I know a lot about Robin Hood, but I don't know, like, all the different variations of the story. But was was there, like, a story where she was trapped in a dungeon or something? Because it felt like that. I know of the myths of Robin Hood. I don't recall one where she was trapped in a dungeon. There was also a BBC TV series called Robin Hood. Although that took insane I, liberties. Yeah, I... Insane I, liberties with the plot. Where, basically, they killed Robin. <laughs> the the... That, well, yeah, but spoilers, Marion died. In the second season, and then they went to heaven together in the third season. And then it was like, oh yeah, we're going to come back for a fourth season without Marion, without Hood, without... <laughs> the sad part is, he's not even joking. Yeah, they yeah they were playing a fourth season without Robin Hood, without me and Marion. And without the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Well, actually, it wasn't the sheriff. It was, it was a guy of guy of Gisborne. Yeah, the sheriff yeah. survived. Yeah, it's like it, what? Like my uh, I had actually had a friend who was like I guess her sister was girlfriend to the guy who played Robin at the time, and he was laughing about it, apparently like behind the scenes like, wait, you guys are actually trying to do a new season? <laughs> wait, the guy that actually played Robin Hood. Yeah, he, he apparently he joked about it to his girlfriend, which was like my friend's friend. Yeah, whatever. Wow. Okay. So yeah. Two people that have come come from my my old school, by the way, that went on to be acting in BBC TV series. But there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but about Marion, I was going to bring this up later, but she wasn't actually credited as Marion, which is weird because they reveal she was Marion at the end. Yeah, I mean... they didn't really flat out state this is Marion, but that's what you were supposed to think. Yeah, and I, no, actually, I think Robin said Marion before they kissed. Oh, I think you're right, yeah. But she's just credited as Quail's Ward. In some ways, I think Clara took Marion's place. I think she did, and you could kind of tell Robin was, well, interested. Do you have more in there? <laughs> as I say, I think we can say that he was enamored with uh, Clara. Yeah. 
And I think that probably added to the whole little jealousy thing between Doctor and him. Speaking of Quaylen, I know we're jumping all over the place here, but um, that scene of him getting stabbed by the sheriff, that was kind of brutal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you have to... You have to remember, in, in most of the myths, the sheriff, sheriff was a complete douchebag. <laughs> Not just most of them. He, he's a complete dick in all of them, really. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he's, you know, like, tame. Like, I guess in that Robin Hood BBC series, he was tamed in it, you know. He was a bit of a comedy villain in that, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was. Okay, but... he killed a couple of people, but he, he, he did played do... more for laughs. He, he didn't do it in a dick way, though, like... This was a dick way, you know. Oh, he was a massive dick in this, and certainly the killing of Quail or the peasants, whatever you want to call them, it mm-hmm. didn't show a whole lot. But so, I find it's better sometimes. Things are best left to the imagination. Oh yeah, like um, you know, well you gotta remember, you know, Doctor Who is meant to be like a family show, so they really can't have, you know, like yeah. blood now, all over the place. Going back to what you said about how um, the the writing and the continuity is a bit off this series, in fact, very off this series, Mm -hmm. and how they don't seem to know, like, from one week to the next what's going on, could that be down possibly to the different writers? Again, you got to remember, though, whenever there's a lead writer, they tell the group of writers, like, uh, um, Moffat tells the group of writers that he's hired to write the episodes what he wants. Like, he told Mark to sneak in robots wanting to go to the promised land right okay so and the thing is another thing i said about the first episode it felt like he wrote it with amy as a companion not clara which is probably why you know there was 30 minutes to you know that's a very good point <clears throat> this whole thing and then like again what, what i was more sad about is he even forgot some of the traditional um like uh Regeneration jokes. There's like I think the conversation between the eleven doctors should have had a thing. You know when he mentioned what color is his hair? Gray. But I want to be ginger. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you know, I see could, what you mean. They could have done that too, but they didn't, which is weird because these like I, I love how they're going with jokes that people in the seventies and eighties said about the show, but they're avoiding the jokes that been making them that's that been overused recently like the whole ginger joke and you know yeah yeah i'm gonna be honest with you i really like the episode as i've already stated it was really funny oh. some really great moments it just seemed a little out of place in terms of airing order i actually think this was filmed differently i think this i think they actually had this done in a different blog i know um deaf in heaven the 12th episode was apparently done around whoop, the same whoop, time spoilers <laughs> No, it's okay. I'm just being silly, but yeah, yeah. Death in Heaven. <laughs> I think I think that was actually filmed like third or fourth. I think. Yeah. Because I think I think the I I don't remember right. I remember I saw somewhere their production order. And I remember seeing that up there. I'm like, wait, why did they do that so far up there? You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So <clears throat> who knows. Well, cast your mind back to Series 6, where they actually swapped um, Night Terrors and The Curse of the Black Spot, I think it was, around. Yeah, and it was clear that they did that, too. I mean, yeah. I, the, the one thing I'm worried about this now is, like, we now have the Doctor, like, he's now acting like the Doctor. He's not telling us he's a Doctor. Like, one of the things that angered me in the first episode was, um, Kapali did not show me he was a Doctor. He kept on saying he was a Doctor. Yeah. Oh, look, I could talk to horses and... Dinosaurs from super far away. It took the restaurant scene, didn't it, to actually show you he was the doctor? No, I didn't. I thought it would, but it was actually the first scene of uh, Into the Dalek. Where okay, that's fair. He, where he is berating uh, Blue for having a gunpoint at him, not even saying please. Like, oh yeah, not like that, not like that. Get it right. Yeah, that's when he showed me he was the doctor. Yeah. But see, then you you mentioned that I compared the this episode to uh, the the Christmas Invasion and Eleventh Hour, and you guys had no idea why I was comparing to the Eleventh uh, the Christmas Invasion. I was comparing I did. this to I did. I was, yes, I was comparing this to the Christmas Invasion because even though Tenet only really had like five minutes in the episode, like at the very end, he showed he showed me in those five minutes that oh yeah, he's the Doctor. Like he went, you know, yeah, All right. Yeah, and then in then eleventh hour, of course, the second he said, "I'm doctor," you knew, you knew right there, you know. 
And it yeah. took Capaldi a little bit of a while to get established. Yeah, and if you and if you go to something else I said where the first episode was probably meant to be a two par, yeah. then it took him three episodes. But he's now at this point. Well, thank God he is, because he's brilliant. Oh yeah, uh, I can uh, admit like how good that scene was where he was all smiles, shaking Robin's hand, and then pissed like <laughs> instantly. Like yeah. he went, he went from <laughs> she shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> like it was instant. It wasn't quite as is like that, but yes, I see what you're trying to say. Like uh, he's, he's a damn gonna... fine actor, and I'm. I'm f- I'm glad that I'm fine. They're finally getting to show you just how good an actor he is. Because you were all like in the in the analysis we did back when it was announced that he was the Twelfth Doctor. I'm not sure. Colin Baker, yada yada yada. Yeah, I, I did the Colin Baker joke because he's actually he has a he has a similar storyline to Colin Baker. Well, look yeah. who's eating crow now. Oh, <laughs> uh, we haven't. We, I I something tells me you know something tells me that the episodes were leaked just show people. People like people who actually went ahead and scouted. No, no, he's good, guys. He's good. Don't, don't, don't stop watching now. Don't stop watching episode one. Episode one's bad. There is a rumor that perhaps the leaks were intentional. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I buy that, but anyway. Um, but yeah, I I know for a fact this was intended to always be episode three. So it's not it's not another night terror situation. So it, it can't put it down to that. But here's another thing. It was almost a bit too much similar to Deep Breath. Mm, kind of. Well, um, think about it. You've got a robotic adversaries from the future, led by a half-man, half-machine antagonist. They're trying to get back to the promised land by collecting from the local population. There was no half-man, half-machine antagonist. Aha! Now, that's where you're wrong. But I'll explain why you're wrong uh, towards the end, because it's, it's rather interesting. <clears throat> you wouldn't have seen it in the episode that you watched, let's put it that way. But originally, oh, there was going to be a half man, half machine antagonist. Oh God! You mean the leaks? They changed something from the leaks? Uh, yeah, but there was a very good reason for it. But I'll uh, I'll talk about that okay. towards the end because I I think it's it's worth talking about. But yeah, we talked about the Doctor doing a good job. Clara again is really showing her metal. Yes, I I didn't think she showed her metal in the last episode. I, I like the scene where she was like, "Oh, don't trust him. He'll get us out this mess. The hardest part is not killing him." <laughs> I actually thought she was pretty good in the last episode, especially when she was teaching the Doctor, because she's a school teacher. Mm -hmm. And she really uh, did a number on the Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, yeah. And I I love the whole, like, I think half the reason why that scene was so good was, all right, let's let's do Rob first. Rob first. Him? Him? Shut up. Yeah. And then, (laughs) you know, he says his line, and then, okay, thank you, Kings of Thieves. Last of the time, Lords. And before you speak... Just try explaining your escape plan without their words. Sonic, Sonic screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a really good chemistry already. Oh, yeah. And again, uh, one of the things I was saying in the notes I tried to have you write, uh, say in that first ups- uh, the first review of this season, um, one of the things that I, I, I thought Clara was going to be my favorite companion back in the Snowman episode because the, ke- the, the chemistry... Coleman had with Smith during that episode was fantastic. You right? love the snowman, I know for a fact. You oh, the snowman. yeah, it was a great episode. It was great. Like I mean, you know, we we've already said how much we did not like season seven. Snowman is up there. Like snowman was a great episode. And then that 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 you know chemistry between the two of them never happened in the last half of the season. No, not, not even once. And now we're having these scenes, like the restaurant scene between Coleman and um, Capaldi, you know, the the scene in the dungeon between Coleman and Capaldi. I mean, we we're now having these scenes where they're able to find, like, finally show the Snowman version of Clara more. You know, the the chemistry, like they have good chemistry. I I don't know how well Barrett can explain this. No, um, you're coming across pretty well. Yeah, like. <sighs> I, I don't know if it's because of the writing or the directing, but she's she's showing what she could have done throughout season seven. Now, I agree. I agree. One slight, oh, two slight points about Clara. One thing was was it just me or was Jenna's northern accent coming through a bit stronger? I can't tell accents. Right. Um, it's 
if this was like a U.S. show and, you know, I started hearing some, you know, Chicago or Brooklyn or, you know. Well, especially when she was saying um, things like shut up. I, I, I sort can't. of caught northernisms in there, being from the north myself, so. Yeah. You, you got to remember, like, you know, outside of America, all British people sound like. <laughs> okay, ignoring that slander. Uh, <laughs> well. Got to get a quick mention in there. My hometown got, a, got a, a, a name check. Got a name check? You can take the girl out of Blackpool. Oh. That's where I was born. Get in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you've, you've mentioned more than once how she actually went to your school or whatever. Yeah, as, as did the guy that played Robin Hood. Not that I'm bragging or anything like that. <laughs> so what do we no, think of... Um, why, why, aren't you, why aren't you on the BBC now, Rainiac? What? A, I'm not an actor, and B, shut up. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, what do we think of, of Robin himself? It, um, it, going on to my whole thing where I think the guest stars were more interesting than Clara, he was good. He was really good. And um, I will actually, again, with the whole blue thing, I will love it if he would have asked if he could have gone for a trip or two. You know, maybe you go on to the next couple of adventures before being sent back to, you know, Sherwood Forest. Yeah, but I don't think he'd fit in the next episode, for example. No. Uh, and I have something to say about that preview. But anyway. Um, oh <laughs> Ten minute rabbit at the end of the episode first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I was really interested. Uh, again, this is the whole thing. Like, I think he could have had some good scenes if he was put into different uh, locales. I mean, you could tell he had the same attitude that the, you know, doctor has. You know, because... They're, like that's half the reason why they clashed against each other. I, f- I feel like they've been comparing the Doctor to at least one of the guest characters in each episode of this series so far. We had the Half-Faced Man, mm-hmm. Rusty, now Robin Hood. I think it's, uh, instead of, yeah, Rusty, the whole good Dalek thing. Um, that's, that's a swear word. Could you hear <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I will not allow not... the words good and Dalek together on this broadcast. I'm I'm not a good Dalek. No, you're a good Dalek. Oh, God. <laughs> I uh, go, go back to that Get scene. Get back I think on topic, for, please. I think that scene back in, into the Dalek would have been better if, he, if after I'm not a good Dalek, if he loaded his eye stock and went away. <laughs> uh I need to have a I button think... installed it just sprays water in the face every time you go off topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, what you need to do is like have like keep on every time I talk about a different episodes, keep on throwing in like a random image on the corner stream that I'm sort of talking about. <laughs> oh, that's what you're doing. You're trying to make it harder for me to edit this together. <laughs> oh, I, I always love making it harder. Um <laughs> You had it here first. But yes, I think I think getting back on topic because my God, we need to. I think he did a good job. Oh yeah, it was a he was a great actor. Um, that laugh I'm, got a little bit irritating. And I think that was the Joker behind it. Yeah, that was the point. And um, yeah. another thing I like is how he's deliberately over the top, and that's really the whole point of the episode. He arrives oh, on yeah. the scene, you're like, this guy can't be really so OTT, so over the top. Then. And I think that might be the point, where you're thinking that he's also a robot. Then you realize... Yeah, but as the episode goes on, he becomes more grounded and more human. Yeah. So Mark Gatiss, who I've already said has is, is really come on as a writer since the Cold War, mm-hmm. um, did a really good job again. Oh, yeah. He's, he's showing his, like... He's showing his chops in Sherlock. Like, I think his episodes are the best episodes in Sherlock so far. Oh, don't get me started on Sherlock, please. And, don't even and, get me started. No, no, no. I'm, I, I watched the Emmys, and my mom was like, oh, that's the Doctor Who guy that you're talking about. No, no, that's the, that's the Ryer mom. That's, that's just Ryer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she thought he was Doctor Who. No, she. I, I think they actually showed uh, Smith, and I was like, no, that's Doctor Who. Oh, okay. Oh, God, right. 
Um, but anyway. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think the Merry Men added a right lot to the story, though. And they're, they're always been there, though. I've never thought they added anything to any story. That's, wow, controversial opinion there. But, uh... well, I, like, if you ever watch, like, Robin Hood and Men in Tides, if you ever watch, like, even the BBC Robin Hood, how much did, you know, Lil John and the rest ever really contribute to anything Robin was doing? Like, yeah, but we're not going to go to the BBC series again because we've already stated no. No. <laughs> mm -mm. But yeah, I suppose they were just supposed to be there in the background, but it can't really be Robin Hood without his Merry Men. Yeah. And Marion, but we've already covered that it wasn't. she wasn't really there that much. Yeah, then uh, I, 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 I guess this might be me because, you know, we don't really have that many Robin Hood stories over here, and most of the Robin Hood stories that are over here is really focused primarily on Robin himself. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's different over there. Uh, no, it's, it's Robin Hood and his Merry Men all the time. It's not the we, Merry Men, so he's always over the focus. Here, yeah, over here in America, it's just Robin Hood. Fair enough. I mean, like in Once Upon a Time, his Merry Men are there, but I think all of them could, together have only had at most five lines in one season. Yeah. But uh, while Robin Hood was, was good and all, and he really was good, I think, uh, is it Tom Riley? Yeah, Tom Riley did a really good job playing him. For mm -hmm. me, the star of the show were the villains. Well, uh, one of the villains. One of the villains. The sheriff, though, no. Oh, what, you prefer the robotic knights? I don't... I, I didn't like the sheriff, and I didn't like the robotic knights. I liked the designs of the robotic knights. Oh, they were pretty like... good looking, yeah. I like their I weapon. They're uh, the forehead the laser cross. thing. The cross. It was a cross. Yeah. But I think, I think it would have actually been better if instead of turning them to dust, if they got killed by like burning like the cross into their brain or whatever. Yeah, but this is a kids show and they can't yeah. show too much that's graphic. Yeah. And they also looked very stupid in the last ten minutes of the program. No. The whole scene let's, was reflecting the lasers with the gold. Let's, let's not even. Aim Let's, let's not even aim. go into how that wouldn't work. <laughs> let's let's aim at their chest instead of the head where we've been aiming at this entire time. <laughs> not to mention, after the first guy got blasted, you'd think they'd switch to something else. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they're giant robots that have super strength? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're knights. Maybe they can use swords. Or maybe, I don't know, they could... Aim for another part of the body? Or hit them over the head like they just did with the Doctor not five minutes ago. There was yeah. a bit of re religious uh, symbology, though, in this episode. You mentioned the cross on the knight's foreheads. I didn't even realize that first, but you're right. And also, uh, somebody pointed out that a Star of David was visible when the final knight was being blown up. Yeah, kind of, because it was bouncing off. All like the, the laser things. fire resembled the Star of David. Whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. I'm going to assume it was the former. Isn't my, uh, Most of the darker myths around Robin Hood takes place around the Crusades, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 right to have Christian symbolog like symbols with the whole Crusades. They even mentioned the Crusades like a half a dozen times. Yeah, but the, yeah. the robotic knights, they look good. Maybe they could have been better villains. Mm -hmm. They could have been used better. I like their plan, though, that they were melting down gold to, to uh, use for their spaceship. Again, oh, a yeah. bit similar to Deep Breath, but we'll skip over that. But they, were, they weren't they were harvesting organs. <laughs> they weren't harvesting <laughs> organs, but they were taking things from the local population. Yeah. It, it, it's... I, I hope that they're not going to reuse this plot like 20 more times before the season's over. I hope not, because twice is enough. Yeah. And again, I think if this had been a bit further away from Deep Breath, like it had been swapped with another comedy episode, if there, if there even is another comedy episode in the series, maybe we wouldn't be spotting the comparisons quite so much. Yeah, and... Yeah, I don't know. And then we've got to and talk I, about this. We've got the sheriff. I didn't like him. He, he felt extremely, extremely generic, and he reminded me too much of the original Master. Yeah, he did have the beard going for him, didn't he? 
Yeah, and this like the same look, and I think he also acted the same. Okay, well, I'll tell you right now, Ben Miller is a very good actor that is well known over here for things like Death in Paradise and also Johnny English that he was in. But he was um, in Johnny English. He was buff. Mm. He was uh, Johnny's assistant slash sidekick. But oh, <laughs> yeah, that guy. I didn't recognize him. I honestly didn't. It, it he's very unrecognizable. I didn't even spot him. Well, I, I knew he was in it, but it was hard to spot him in the trailer from last week. Mm. I thought he did a decent job, I and mean, he was menacing. He was creepy. He had a sense of charm. But you're right. He was very generic. Oh, yeah. Like, like, if, I, if he wasn't I, constantly saying, I'm the sheriff, I'm the future king, you wouldn't know he was the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, and, and the, of course, you know, he... I think it's another reason why it was generic was because, well, it's Robin Hood. It's, the sheriff is always the bad guy. The sheriff's always going to have this you know, contravalu plan of how to, you know, trap Robin and all yeah. this stuff. And I think Fresno said it best. It reminded him very much of Christopher Guest. From the the uh, Princess Bride, a little bit. He even says he wants to take over the world. <laughs> I, I like how he I like how he said how he wanted to take over the world. I'm going to take over this, and then I'm going to take over this, and I'm going to and then like the whole time Claire was like, and then I'm the going to take over this, and and then I'm going to take over this, and then and then the world. He was very hammy, wasn't he? Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with hammy villains, and I think this episode certainly required one. I just think it was too similar to a lot of other Sheriffs of Nottingham hymns I've seen. Yeah. I don't know. And I just think it's just too similar to a generic bad guy in general. Okay, the, the other major thing we have to talk about is that ending sword fight, because it was pretty darn cool. But before we get to that, a couple of things. First of all, Promised Land. It's definitely heaven, and I think if we want to go into a big theory about it, it's also the interior of a TARDIS. Oh, you you're buying tell. into the, into Fresno's theory. It's the interior of a TARDIS. Uh, I actually think I said it first before. Um, well, geez, uh, not a competition. Who can come up with the best theory? I, I, I don't know. Well, I I, I, th I mentioned it because I, you know, I, I whenever I first saw it, I said it's either the Ronnie or the Master, and that has to be the interior of TARDIS. Please, not the we, Master. Please. Why not the Master? Just no. <laughs> Why not the master? You really want the master to be the mistress? Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They've talked about how... Uh, but then you've got the master being the doctor's girlfriend. He was a boyfriend. No, but... no, no. That could have been that cheeky and tongue joke that Sims used to do with his version of the master. Okay, it's... that's that's fair point. That's a fair point. All right. But anyway, whoever Missy is, she didn't show up in this episode, and I'm so glad. Yeah, and but the thing is, the one of the things I was going to say is, um, either heaven is another dimension, or it's a TARDIS that is connected to the Doctor's TARDIS in a different dimension that's following him around. This is getting she, really complicated, but yes. Because okay. she grabbed the half-face man in the 1800s, and she grabbed that one soldier in the future. So it ha it you know, and the thing is, it's one of the things we don't really explore much with the TARDIS. It's not just time and space; it's time and relative uh, dimension, relative dimension, right there in space. So the worst part now is that we've now got two story arcs to follow, both both Missy and the Promised Land, although they appear to be connected. The screens on the uh, spaceship appear to show it as an orange planet, but that's probably a decoy. Uh, it looked like it was showing um, a uh, gar the garden, the garden that uh, the half-faced man was in. It showed the garden. I just saw an orange the planet. I saw I saw the square. It looked like a square, and it looked like there was a fountain in the middle and whatever. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that particular scene again, but but I'll take your word for it. I honestly thought when the sheriff got dunked in the gold. Which was a really he was nice going, visual. He was going. He was going pop up <laughs> next to Missy. Yeah, gold got <laughs> Sheriff Nottingham next to Missy. <laughs> I, I like the scene, like after the scene where, like, it looked like he was trying to escape. Yeah. Which, which you know, he probably would have been dead as soon as he hit the thing. But I was not expecting he was going to like somehow crawl out, and then this episode was going to continue somehow. But I'm glad it didn't. So that was the and first could... thing to mention. Uh, the other thing, briefly, 
Oh hell, let's get to the sword fight because this was the really nice big action sequence. Um, if this was any other doctor, he would have stopped the sheriff from lying him from dropping into the vat of gold. That's one of the things I kind. I don't agree with that because he was the villain. Again, the you know, the doctor doesn't like when people die in front of him. Especially I'll go back to Fritz Prophet- Inferno's point. He's not the man he never would. He's the man he'd rather not. Yeah. But if he did, if, this, if the sheriff didn't perish, then his plan would have come to fruition, and half the, the country would have been wiped out. No, he still would. They still would be able to run out, run out of the dungeon with, you know, the sheriff and you know, like, you know. Yeah ropes around him, you know, and they still would have had the whole scene where all three of them had to shoot the bow. Oh, don't get me started from Arrow X, Arrow X Machina either. Yeah, that was kind of bad. That was really yeah. bad. And, like, I love how they were like, all this gold was only 86%. Dink! 100%. Yeah, and it didn't even hit yeah. the engine. It didn't even hit the engine. It just hit the metal bit. It made no sense, but uh, I think I'm trying to block out my memory. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was fairly obvious the Golden Arrow was going to play a, a role. Of course. At some point, but I was hoping it wasn't that. It would have been nice if, you know, maybe the 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 knight's weakness was gold. Kind of like, well, like the Cybermen. Kind of like the Cybermen, yeah. but... Maybe that's why they didn't do that. Anyway... Yeah. Back to the sword fight then. I think it was well choreographed. It was a good conclusion to the storyline. It was logically laid out. It was exciting. And I like how the move that Robin Fine used to vanquish the sheriff had been used on him earlier on by the Doctor. And I think it's also been a move that's been used in other Robin Hood shows. I remember. I, I think uh, Men in Tights used the same move. You are insanely clued up to your subject. This is very impressive. <laughs> but we had to talk about this because there was an edit made to the final... A sword fight that went out and it does actually change the storyline somewhat so here's what happened in both the leaks and also it's been confirmed by the BBC so it's about a 30 second cut the fighting as we saw at some point um, Doctor and Clara throw something like a curtain over him and Robin cuts the sheriff's head off uh... but yeah but then the sheriff's head starts talking and the sheriff's body doesn't fall down. It grabs hold of Clara, holds her at the point of the sword, and the sheriff is revealed to be half man, half robot. And here's, uh, the, here's the explanation in the storyline. The Sky Castle landed on top of him, and because of this, the knights made him into half man, half machine. Uh-huh. And suddenly, his half man, half engine comment makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think I probably would have hated this episode if that was the... <laughs> well, the reason the reason why it was cut was because in light of recent events, because the two journalists who were beheaded in the Middle East, tragically, and an elderly mm-hmm. uh, woman was killed in the same manner uh, last week in London. So the BBC made the, in my call, the right decision to cut that bit of the episode and just air what we saw. And it actually was all the better for it. Mm-hmm. It was a really smooth edit, because I knew there was an edit coming. I'd read about it online earlier. Uh, I was looking at the episode the first time. Couldn't find it at all. Only on the third watch of that scene did I notice there was a slight skip in the music. If you didn't notice that, you couldn't even tell. Hmm. And the revelation of him being half man, half engine was actually more subtle because of his comment, rather than just, oh, my head's off, I'm a robot. Yeah. I thought it was worth mentioning. It's worth mentioning. It's kind of weird. And the thing is, they could have still have done other things to prove that he was half robot. Maybe, like, show some blood on the sheriff's sword after cutting Robin. And maybe if Robin Robin did, like, a similar cut to his arm and Which nothing shows me, up. When the sheriff cut Robin's arm, I thought that's how they're going to finally prove he wasn't a robot. Like he was bleeding. Same here. Same here. And of course they didn't do it yeah. that way. But Also Kat, who uh, was on the review last week, and, and openly said she wanted to get rid of you. <laughs> she didn't Thanks, really. Kat. It was a joke. But <laughs> Thanks, Kat. I was, all, I was all for you being in this one, but... <sighs> <laughs> and you were so angry, you subscribed to her on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just subscribed to her on Twitter. Or followed her on Twitter. Yeah. You don't subscribe on yeah. Twitter, but yeah. Um... 
I think we've we've talked just about enough of this, so I think we'll let Fresno have the last word, technically, from his uh, boss dungeon review. He compares it to dinosaurs on a spaceship. Hmm. It's not the best episode storyline-wise, but it's a fun romp. That's still a weird comparison. <laughs> not in terms like of storyline how... content, but just what it was. Yeah. It was a standalone episode that probably had no actual difference to the overall uh, story arc, hence why there was no Misty or other than the Promised Land. And I do like that the Promised Land wasn't just tacked on like, hey, it's here. It actually had a clue to offer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I, en- I enjoyed this a lot. I think you did as well. Mm-hmm. Right uh, aside. Do we uh, talk about the, the trailer for the next episode? I think we can. Listen is next week. I don't like how they did the trailer. Oh, did you get the you got the American version, didn't you? No, I got the um completely not pirated from a um <laughs> website um <laughs> American version. Um <laughs> You could have just said you got the American version and we'd have been fine. <laughs> I didn't even know there was two different I've trailers. I've seen the two trailers, and one thing that people were complaining about was the music choice for the American one was completely uncalled for. It was Smith era music, mm. and it didn't fit the visuals of the trailer at all. It's okay. So I saw the I saw your guys' version where it's basically the same trailer for Blink, but spoken by Capaldi. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you had a problem with. Okay. It's and the thing is they uh they they did a similar thing with the dollhouse episode a few seasons back that the whole trailer you remember the creepy dollhouse thing yeah I think I'm trying to put that from my memory yeah they did the same thing with the trailer where you know Smith is doing the whole tenant speech where he's explaining the monster you know oh yes and I I don't I don't like the trailer I it's trying to be like Blink. It's trying to recapture, you know, the glory of Blink. And it goes back to what you said earlier to me about them trying to sort of take old storylines and rehash them. Mm-hmm. Like, Into the Dalek, obviously, rehash of Dalek. Mm-hmm. And then, right there, listen, Blink, listen, Blink, you know? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. But it still looks pretty good. It looks good, but I just, I think they probably could have done something better than rehashing the same trailer that they've used. I think, I think this is the fourth time used. I, I can't quite remember if they've done it again. I can only remember uh, Blink and uh, that Dollhouse episode doing it, but... The, the trailers haven't been that great this series. The stories, mm. yeah, they've been pretty good to watch, but the trailers, not so much. But... I don't know what's uh, Moffat's fetish with uh, having unique rules for his monsters. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, you like, you pointed this out in your uh, text review, and I think we we mentioned this uh, with the with the clockwork droids. They have to have some sort of rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very rule oriented, and I wonder why you have to listen for this monster. Will there even be a monster? It looks like a psychological horror. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know anything about the episode because I don't. I haven't checked any of the leaks out. I um. I try to keep the spoil information away from me, so I can mm-hmm. only go off what's on the trailer and general information out there put out by the BBC. Danny Pink's in it, which is odd. Like he's actually in the TARDIS if you look at the trailer. No, they. He's had other guests in the TARDIS all the time. Uh, yeah, but. He looks a little strange, don't you think? In his, I, his appearance? You you gotta remember, everyone has that look whenever they're in the TARDIS. Well, like they've aged about small. 50 years. It's smaller on the outside. Oh. Oh, you mean that sort of look? No, I mean how he, his actual appearance, physical appearance. Oh. I don't mean he's looking strange. I mean he looks strange. Hmm. But anyway, that's for next week. Um, if it manages to recapture the magic of Midnight or Blink, we could be in for something quite special. Yes, Midnight was the other one where they used the same exact trailer for. That's the thing I was thinking about. But Midnight was Sorry. fantastic. Midnight was good, but again, it's the whole trailer. 
I mean, yeah. you can you can only see the same trailer so many times. I think the reason they did that style of trailer was this is all about sort of shocks and what's in your own mind, and so they can't show too much or give the game away. Mm-hmm. But as I say, <laughs> it looks creepy, it looks scary, and I'm ready for it if you are. Yeah, I just I'm just hoping that it doesn't turn out to be something, you know, not. Like, I don't know. Something unoriginal. If it's if it's something that if you say if it's completely psychological and there's actually really nothing there. Hmm. And if it turns out to be like that well, that one episode with Smith and uh and uh Coleman last season. Um Jonathan Center of the Tardis? No. Hyde? Hyde. Oh. That's another thing. That that's the thing I'm more worried about. This is going to be another hide. Oh, I, I sincerely hope not. But anyway, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this review of Robots of Sherwood. Uh, Kachiri, mm-hmm. if you'd like to tell the people where they can find you on the internet, uh, Twitter the Kuchiri at the Kuchiri. Um, YouTube, uh, it's Kuchiri now, but it's uh, youtubecom slash K-U-C-H-K-U-T-O. Um, I also have a Twitch. Uh, that's Kuchiri, yeah. Okay, I'll link all those in the uh, in the description, along with Fresno's Boss Dungeon blog, because he's asked me to for the each story of the series, and because he's a pal, mm-hmm. that's what you do for pals. So anyway, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. has been uh, Robot of Sherwood, I hope you enjoyed it, and next time, we have Listen, and I don't know who I'll be having as a guest, Dun-dun. but hopefully, Dun-dun. whatever. Until then, Dun-dun. bye for Dun-dun. now. Oh, next week is going to be all four of us. <laughs> <laughs> that... It's a possibility. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>